Hey, hi there. Welcome back. It's my joy to read to you the readings for day number 117, which are Joshua 12 and 13, Psalm 72, and our first reading in Acts 23. Turning now to Joshua 12. As we heard yesterday, God fought for Israel, even causing the sun and moon to stand still. Basically, the main central body of land was conquered in only two campaigns. It is important to remember that the total destruction of the people groups listed was commanded by God because of their disgusting pagan and idolatrous practices. Joshua 10.40 says, This was what the Lord God of Israel had commanded. And see also chapter 11, verse 20. Joshua 12. The people of Israel had already conquered and occupied the land east of the Jordan, from the Arnon Valley up to the Jordan Valley and as far north as Mount Hermon. They defeated two kings. One was Sihon, the Amorite king who ruled at Heshbon. His kingdom included half of Gilead, from Auroror on the edge of the Arnon Valley, and from the city in the middle of that valley as far as the Jabok River, the border of Ammon. It included the Jordan Valley from Lake Galilee south to Beth Jesimoth, east of the Dead Sea, and on toward the foot of Mount Pisgah. They also defeated King Og of Bashan, who was one of the last of the Rephaim. He ruled at Ashtaroth and Edrei. His kingdom included Mount Hermon, Salekah, and all of Bashan, as far as the boundaries of Geshur and Maakah as well as half of Gilead, as far as the territory of King Sihon of Heshbon. These two kings were defeated by Moses and the people of Israel. Moses, the Lord's servant, gave their land to the tribes of Reuben and Gad, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, to be their possession. Joshua and the people of Israel defeated all the kings in the territory west of the Jordan from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, to Mount Halak in the south near Edom. Joshua divided this land among the tribes and gave it to them as a permanent possession. This portion included the hill country, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley and its foothills, the eastern slopes, and the dry country in the south. This land had been the home of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The people of Israel defeated the kings of the following cities, Jericho, Ai, near Bethel, Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, Eglon, Gezer, Debir, Geder, Horma, Arad, Libna, Adulam, Makeda, Bethel, Tapua, Hefer, Afek, Lasharon, Madon, Hazor, Shimron Meron, Akshaf, Ta'anak, Megiddo, Kedesh, Jokneam in Carmel, Dor on the coast, Goim in Galilee, and Tirza, thirty one kings in all. Joshua 13. Joshua was now very old. The Lord said to him, You are very old, but there is still much land to be taken, all the territory of Philistia and Geshur, as well as all the territory of the Avim to the south. Parentheses the land from the stream Shehor at the Egyptian border as far north as the border of Ekron was considered Canaanite. The kings of the Philistines lived at Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. And parentheses, and the Lord continues to speak. There is still all the Canaanite country and Meara, 
which belonged to the Sidonians, as far as Afek at the Amorite border, the land of the Gebalites, all of Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad, which is south of Mount Hermon, to Hamath Pass. This includes all the territory of the Sidonians, who live in the hill country between the Lebanon mountains and Misrafoth Maim. I will drive all these peoples out as the people of Israel advance. You must divide the land among the Israelites, just as I have commanded you to do. Now then, divide this land among the other nine tribes and half of the tribe of Manasseh, for them to possess as their own. The tribes of Reuben and Gad and the other half of the tribe of Manasseh had already received the land that Moses, the Lord's servant, had given them. It was on the east side of the Jordan River. Their territory extended to Aurorur on the edge of the Arnon Valley and the city in the middle of that valley and included all of the plateau from Medeba to Dibon. It went as far as the border of Ammon and included all the cities that had been ruled by the Amorite king Sihon, who had ruled at Heshbon. It included Gilead, the regions of Geshur and Maaka, all of Mount Hermon and all of Bashan as far as Saleka. It included the kingdom of Og, the last of the Rephaim who had ruled at Ashtaroth and Edre. Moses had defeated these people and driven them out. However, the Israelites did not drive out the people of Geshur and Maaka. They still live in Israel. Moses had given no land to the tribe of Levi. As the Lord had told Moses, they were to receive as their possession the share of the sacrifices burned on the altar to the Lord God of Israel. Heading the territory assigned to Reuben. Moses had given a part of the land to the families of the tribe of Reuben as their possession. Their territory extended to Aurorur on the edge of the Arnon Valley and the city in the middle of that valley and included all the plateau around Medeba. It included Heshbon and all the cities on the plateau, Dibon, Bamoth Baal, Beth Baal Meon, Jahaz, Kademoth, Mafaath, Kiriathaim, Sibma, Zereth Shahar, on the hill in the valley, Beth Peor, the slopes of Mount Pisgah, and Beth Jeshimoth. It included all the cities of the plateau and the whole kingdom of the Amorite king Sihon, who had ruled at Heshbon. Moses defeated him, as well as the rulers of Midian, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba. All of them had ruled the land for King Sihon. Among those whom the people of Israel killed was the fortune-teller Balaam, son of Beor. The Jordan was the western border of the tribe of Reuben. These were the cities and towns given to the families of the tribe of Reuben as their possession. Heading The Territory Assigned to Gad Moses had also given part of the land to the families of the tribe of Gad as their possession. Their territory included Jazer and all the cities of Gilead, half the land of Ammon as far as Aroror, which is east of Rabbah. Their land extended from Heshbon to Ramath Mizpeh and Betonim, from Mahanaim to the border of Lodebar. In the Jordan Valley, it included Beth Haram, Beth Nimra, Sukkoth, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of King Sihon of Heshbon. Their western border was the Jordan River as far north as Lake Galilee. These were the cities and towns given to the families of the tribe of Gad as their possession. Heading The Territory Assigned to East Manasseh Moses had given a part of the land to the families of half the tribe of Manasseh as their possession. Their territory extended to Mahanaim and included all of Bashan, 
the whole kingdom of Og, the king of Bashan, as well as all sixty of the villages of Jair in Bashan. It included half of Gilead, as well as Ashtaroth and Edre, the capital cities of Og's kingdom in Bashan. All this was given to half the families descended from Machir, son of Manasseh. This is how Moses divided the land east of Jericho and the Jordan when he was in the plains of Moab. But Moses did not assign any land to the tribe of Levi. He told them that their possession was to be a share of the offerings to the Lord God of Israel. Let's turn to Psalm 72. It's clear that this psalm, written by King Solomon, or more likely written about King Solomon, goes beyond Solomon, giving adoration to the King of Kings. The Hebrew title can be variously interpreted. In the Good News translation, it says, By Solomon. Psalm 72 Teach the king to judge with your righteousness, O God. Share with him your own justice, so that he will rule over your people with justice and govern the oppressed with righteousness. May the land enjoy prosperity. May it experience righteousness. May the king judge the poor fairly. May he help the needy and defeat their oppressors. May your people worship you as long as the sun shines, as long as the moon gives light for ages to come. May the king be like rain on the fields, like showers falling on the land. May righteousness flourish in his lifetime and may prosperity last as long as the moon gives light. His kingdom will reach from sea to sea, from the Euphrates to the ends of the earth. The peoples of the desert will bow down before him. His enemies will throw themselves to the ground. The kings of Spain and of the islands will offer him gifts. The king of Sheba and Seba will bring him offerings. All kings will bow down before him. All nations will serve him. He rescues the poor who call to him, and those who are needy and neglected. He has pity on the weak and poor. He saves the lives of those in need. He rescues them from oppression and violence. Their lives are precious to him. Long live the king. May he be given gold from Sheba. May prayers be said for him at all times. May God's blessings be on him always. May there be plenty of grain in the land. May the hills be covered with crops as fruitful as those of Lebanon. May the cities be filled with people like fields full of grass. May the king's name never be forgotten. May his fame last as long as the sun. May all nations ask God to bless them as he has blessed the king. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel. He alone does these wonderful things. Praise his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole world. Amen and amen. And verse 20 says, this is the end of the prayers of David, son of Jesse. And let's turn to Acts 23. Paul gave his defense from the top of the stairway leading to the military headquarters. In spite of the miracles in his story, the mob was not impressed. 
It was the word Gentiles that caused the final violent reaction. Acts 23 Paul looked straight at the council and said, My fellow Israelites, my conscience is perfectly clear about the way in which I have lived before God to this very day. The high priest Ananias ordered those who were standing close to Paul to strike him on the mouth. Paul said to him, God will certainly strike you, you whitewashed wall. You sit there to judge me according to the law, yet you break the law by ordering them to strike me. The men close to Paul said to him, You are insulting God's high priest. Paul answered, My fellow Israelites, I did not know that he was the high priest. The scripture says, You must not speak evil of the ruler of your people. When Paul saw that some of the group were Sadducees and the others were Pharisees, he called out in the council, Fellow Israelites, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial here because of the hope I have that the dead will rise to life. As soon as he said this, the Pharisees and Sadducees started to quarrel, and the group was divided. For the Sadducees say that people will not rise from death, and there are no angels or spirits, but the Pharisees believe in all three. The shouting became louder, and some of the teachers of the law who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and protested strongly, We cannot find a thing wrong with this man. Perhaps a spirit or an angel really did speak to him. The argument became so violent that the commander was afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces. So he ordered his soldiers to go down into the group, get Paul away from them, and take him to the fort. That night the Lord stood by Paul and said, Don't be afraid. You have given your witness for me here in Jerusalem, and you must also do the same in Rome. The next morning some of the Jews met together and made a plan. They took a vow that they would not eat or drink anything until they had killed Paul. There were more than forty who planned this together. Then they went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have taken a solemn vow together not to eat a thing until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the council send word to the Roman commander to bring Paul down to you, pretending that you want to get more accurate information about him. But we will be ready to kill him before he ever gets here. But the son of Paul's sister heard about the plot, so he went to the fort and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the officers and said to him, Take this young man to the commander. He has something to tell him. The officer took him, led him to the commander, and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you, because he has something to say to you. The commander took him by the hand, led him off by himself, and asked him, What do you have to tell me? He said, the Jewish authorities have agreed to ask you tomorrow to take Paul down to the council, pretending that the council wants to get more accurate information about him. But don't listen to them, because there are more than forty men who will be hiding and waiting for him. They have taken a vow not to eat or drink until they have killed him. They are now ready to do it and are waiting for your decision. The commander said, Don't tell anyone that you have reported this to me. And he sent the young man away. As we pray today, I will start our prayer with words that were penned by Graham Kendrick. Let's pray together. All I once held dear built my life upon. 
all this world reveres and wars to own. All I once thought gain I have counted loss, spent and worthless now, compared to this. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you, Lord. Now my heart's desire is to know you more, to be found in you and known as yours, to possess by faith what I could not earn, all-surpassing gift of righteousness. Oh, to know the power of your risen life and to know you in your sufferings, to become like you in your death, my Lord, and so with you to live and never die. Knowing you, Jesus, Knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy, my righteousness. And I love you, Lord. <laughs>